Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and we're going to talk about the release of the new ship during that's for sale now with the games console, and that's the Anvil Terrapin, and whether it's worth your money or not. The Terrapin was initially released to be an Aegis design, but the overall role and design of the ship, it was the right decision to end up having it moved to Anvil. Now the ship is on sale right now and is going to be available through August 29th and is on sale for the price of $195. The Terrapin is a really interesting ship and is one of my favorite types of ships. One that's capable of doing a lot because it provides a lot of additional value in my mind. Um, but getting to the specifics of the ship, the Terrapin was initially designed uh, in the 28th century as part of the Empire's restructuring efforts towards a more defensively strategized type of navy. And they more than accomplished that with this ship. Everything is focused on protection, with three layer deep armor on the top and bottom and some additional extra thick armor on the sides, all of which is designed to be able to retract, allowing you to vent out and cool the ship a little bit more effectively. The ship also comes with some advanced power plant that really focuses on powering the shield system, which is also really large for the vehicle size. The ship is known to lack some maneuverability, even though it does feature some rotational main thrusters for better control, but it did get something that we didn't expect out of it, and that's a good weapons loadout. It starts out with two size 2 laser cannons and a size 5 remote turret on the nose. The ship has been labeled as a flying tank, and that makes sense, especially when you consider that on the, uh, you know, the Vanguard, for example, has a size 5 on the front. Um, the top is also going to feature kind of a size 4 utility mount that could be used to house another weapon, or potentially more scanning options as well. It's built to run with a two-man crew, commonly including a pilot and a scanning officer. However, it's certainly capable of being effectively run um, solo, which is a nice perk to this ship. Now, there are a lot of options in the roles here, including the most common one, which is a long-range survey and scanning ship based on its top-of-the-line long-range scanner. Having a durable ship designed to do scanning, I also hear the potential to be a scout and maintain a relatively safe feel while in some dangerous territory or maybe even while operating in an asteroid infested space. You know, sending a Terrapin through the jump point first is a good option considering it could take some abuse before having to retreat without having to submit the rest of your fleet to unnecessary damage which means cost. Lore goes on to talk about the Terrapin also being a capable armored personnel carrier. So if that means that we're going to see some modularity on the interior for seats, or it might just mean that you could end up securing people going from point A to point B while they walk around your ship. Either way, it's another option that's available to the Terrapin. But what makes this ship a capable scout and a surveyor also makes it an option to use for roles like search and rescue. The scanning ability helps you to find targets in debris, while the durability and weaponry mean that you can take a beating and provide support while you're trying to pull the people you're trying to save into the ship. Uh, one thing that a lot of people have been wanting is that command and control type ship, especially one at a smaller size. And knowing the capabilities of this ship, it means that it could sit there, taking damage while engaging in combat, while the scanning operator in the back is commanding the rest of the fleet. A smaller ship like that means the pilot has control over almost everything. It's a really nice option and one that I think a lot of people are probably going to take advantage of from an organizational standpoint. It's not just speculation either. It was a mentioned role, so I think that's something of a selling point that you probably want to consider. So that's kind of the overall gist of the ship, kind of the description, what it's intended to do, but should you buy it? Well, based on the price, I was actually a little surprised at how much it cost. It was part of the release wave of ships that, that included the Reliant in that semi-starter category, so I was expecting it to be closer to $100. However, we're also getting a heck of a lot more ship and more capabilities than I ever expected it to have. One huge benefit here is that the ship is known to be commonly available, which means that repairs and replacements should be cheaper, and replacements should also happen much faster than on some more exclusive ships. I think the ones that are going to really want this ship is going to be a pretty big list. Um, the most likely buyer is going to be that long-range explorer who doesn't want to spend Carrick money up front or even in operating cost as this could be run effectively solo. Uh, I think for those of you that are like me, those who really value versatility are going to be the people who really want to jump on a ship like this as well. People who want to do search and rescue but maybe have doubts about the abilities of the Cutlass Red, especially since we haven't seen the rework to that ship yet, um, would probably find value in the Terrapin, even though the price is quite a bit higher. Um, but I think organizationally, the ship is a really good choice to be an armored option to run command and control, as well as being the first ship through a jump point before bringing in others like your whole series that could be in more damage or in more danger and end up limiting some of the potential cost factors that you would have to take on from you know losing cargo or taking damage and having to pay for repairs. 
all in all, I think the ship is a really good option for a lot of people. The question's just going to be, um, is it worth the money? Is that the comfortable price range for you? Um, but I think when we start comparing it to other ships, especially ones that kind of fall into similar price ranges, I think there is a ton of value in this ship, and it's one that I'm actually really excited to see released, and I think it's going to be a good option for a ton of people. So if you have questions about this, please let me know. Otherwise, I appreciate you guys watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day, and take care.